Welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am your host, Jinx. Sadly, uh, still a bit under the weather with this uh, flu that I picked up while traveling the last couple of weeks. So hopefully I won't uh, cough in your ear too much during our call today. Uh, I'm going to kick things off with our protocol update. Fred, is that going to be you handling that? That's me. Beauty. I will just roll from top to bottom, starting with protocol through all Grove updates. So okay, starting start. off with Shannon, um, there are a lot of parallel efforts happening with regards to Shannon. <clears throat> we are working through uh, relay mining, tokenomics, some tech debt, and some utility, as well as uh, refactoring some of the end-to-end -end testing suite to ensure a much smoother and faster development experience. Um, specifically within relay mining, um, there is some work going on with proportional relay mining to difficulty rewards, supplier-driven difficulty, and working through some of the probabilistic proofs, enforcement, and validation um, within tokenomics, working through inflation, gateway reimbursement, and slashing. Uh, and the tech debt, we are uh, just handling some, some naming convention things. And further down into utility, we're talking through stake-weighted rewards, proof submissions, and minimum actor stakings. So lots and lots going on on the Shannon front, um, a lot of moving parts, uh, looking forward to the outcomes at the end of this week. Um, I'm going to move forward into PATH. Uh, PATH is officially in a pre-alpha release. It is available, it is publicly available, and I am linking it in the chat. Uh, it's under the GitHub organization Build with Grove. Um, so we're really excited. We released it late last Friday. Um, just Super duper excited that this is out and live. Uh, I can't say enough good things about it. And this is just the very, very tippy top of the iceberg. This is just an ice cube of that iceberg um, that's to come. So uh, working down what's under development this week with PATH, uh, we are working through uh, embedded QoS checks. So that really is to get just the baseline of QoS that our portal has today around you know format of responses and requests as well as just some static checks. Um, right now, the big effort is on building in um, a library that uh, deals with JSON RPC as a specification. Um, so that is uh, underway and that is under development. Um, in parallel, we're adding the ability to integrate with a database for user and service management, as well as re uh, rate limiting uh, on capacity and throughput. So. Uh, please stay tuned to that repository, and if you're really eager to get started, please get your hands on it, give us some feedback, open some issues, leave some comments. We are super excited to get involvement from the community on PATH. Um, lastly, just on the portal gateway end, uh, we, are, uh, we have some very uh, alpha drip. Uh, if you check our latest tweet, um, we're going to be... Uh, integrating and listing on a major marketplace uh, soon, soon TM. Um, so we're very excited about that. Um, and uh, our pricing went live last week, and we've just kind of been working with many of our users on increasing the number of relays. So that is it on the Grove side. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to share. Uh, firing on all fronts. Beautiful. Sasquatch, any updates on y'all side? Uh, nothing too crazy. I um, have a couple of uh, new clients in the works. Um, but other than that, I'm uh, just continuing to make the, uh, to flush out some kinks on the gateway side. Beautiful. And uh, any other gateway updates uh, that we should know about? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Uh, in that case, I certainly don't have anything planned from presentation perspective today. I'm mostly struggling to stay upright today. So if anyone else has a topic they'd like to kick off, uh, please feel free. Just come off mute and uh, get talking. I can do a quick short thing if you folks would like. 
sure. uh, about stabilizing the network since I've been talking about it for a month now. I'm going to drop a link in the chat that many of the node runners have seen. This is a work in progress, but we were talking to Mike about it this morning. Basically, have somewhat of an idea of what we're looking to do. Um, okay, so um, when the team, when we downsize our team, we let go of the sales team, and to make sure that we had a good communication um, throughout the transition of going from the size of the team that we had to what we currently have, which is like ninety percent engineering. Um, Fred and I basically went on a journey to chat with every single one of our customers that we had a white label deal with. Uh, and we had phenomenal conversations across the board. It took about five weeks. We talked to maybe 60, 70, 80 customers. We have a few hundred paying customers or maybe, yeah, it's like, I don't know, three, four, 500 paying customers, uh, of the white label, uh, flavor. They're about 10 to 20%. Um, so, um, so we talked to all of them and they basically had told us that, they love our service um, when it works. Um, and they described when it works as uh, when nodes return the correct responses. Um, and for whatever reason, you know, it, just some nodes go down, some nodes stay up, some nodes uh, are, are not uh, close, to, uh, close to the tip. Um, latency sometimes increases for no reason, sometimes chains totally disappear off the network and so on and so forth. And in the middle of this conversation, you know, we had Gandalf Cove Live, as we've mentioned in the past. And due to the static incentives that are in place, we saw, uh, you know, some instability for about, I'd say, 15% of the network, 20% of the chains that we support in the network. Um, and those would be all the flavors of like ZK Sync, OpBNB, Moonbeam, Moonriver, Avalanche Archival, Kava Archival, and a few others. Um, so in that time period, uh, Fred and I kind of decided to take all the feedback we got and um, and the feedback basically came down to like, hey, your new pricing sounds awesome. We would love to send you more relays, but our customers complain when we load balance more traffic onto Grove and by proxy pocket network. Um, can you get your ne network to be stable? Um, so we put together this massive, massive spreadsheet that's kind of a work in progress. And, you know, parts of it are easy to read, parts of it are not. We'll clean up a version of it for more of the public in the future. But we work with the node runners to figure out what does it cost to run this network? And what does it, what do we actually need to do to get the network to a place of stability where we and porters and node, uh, what's it called? Um, Liquify, Chainstack, and the other gateways can all go out to their specific user bases or customer, potential customers and figure out how to, um, so they feel comfortable to sell the service that we're offering, right? Because we don't really feel comfortable at times because the service tends to go down. So we went through and we basically graded every single service or chain or chain ID that's supported by what is its currently current status? Is it active? Has it been deprecated? Um, give it some reasoning. How hard is it to run that chain? How many relays has Grove done? What percentage of total relays from Grove side over a period of about two months was it? How difficult is it? to run that chain is an archival chain and all the hardware and pricing requirements. And from there, we've basically created a score, a scoring system, uh, which Fred can speak to if, if we end up going with the score um, on what should the incentives be? So we are basically thinking about this, uh, thinking about making a couple adjustments and I'm kind of preluding what Mike is probably is either going to publish later this week or next week about um, how he wants to update the economics. Um, and the idea here is we, we are probably, there's going to be non-static or dynamic incentives for chains that don't have a lot of traffic and that are difficult to run so that there is proliferation on those chains uh, of, of uh, pocket node availability and potentially full node availability. Um, and that's all in flight. And there's probably going to be seven, eight, nine, ten different like steps or stages for each um, for each set of chains. So there's going to be like chains that are just, we'll get one specific value and then a bunch of chains that will get even, you know, will get double the amount of pocket minted per relay or triple or quadruple depending on what bucket they fall into. Um, and this is one way we're going to go about initially at least to solve this problem. Another way that we're thinking about it down the road, and again, none of this, this isn't guaranteed to happen, but we're also thinking about Given what our customers have said, a lot of them want not just long tails of chains, but they want archival chains with all the bells and whistles. So there's a 
a world where the chains that Grove will end up wanting to send traffic to are going to be the very expensive heavy chains, the archival chains. But before we get, uh, and so we would consolidate traffic to that, but that isn't happening anytime soon. I don't want to worry anyone here about that. I, I bring this up right now because we would like to continue going back to our customers who we have great relationships with and having them send whatever traffic that they can. But we don't want to do that and then have them come back to us again and be like, hey, the network isn't stable. So we're going to first increase incentives or Mike will handle that and he'll, you know, he'll publish his thoughts on that shortly. And then after that, we will take a step back and see what are the next steps we want to take. And maybe this migration to only archival chains would be the next step. So this is kind of how we are thinking about it from our perspective. Um, on that note, I do want to call out stake nodes uh, for, and pocket scan and node fleets uh, for all kind of coming out in the last, um, well, I don't know, let's say two weeks and basically standing up a bunch of access to a bunch of chains that were dying or in the process of dying. Um, so like massive kudos to them. The way these deals basically work is we are providing them all with a bunch of pocket, uh, non-custodial pocket stake so they can each stake at least 30 nodes or more. And they are then hooking those up to the chains that they support and they're keeping a chunk of those rewards as, as a, as because they're running kind of the non-incentivized chains right now. So we can safely stabilize the network for those chains and then provide, um, then tell our customers that, hey, start sending us traffic. So like really kudos to them for stepping up and helping us out um, and when, we, when we had asked. So I just wanted to call them out as well. So I know that was like five, 10 minutes of me talking in extreme detail because this is the group of people that actually cares. So I'm just going to stop here to see if there's any questions for myself and or Fred. Uh, I'll just comment <clears throat> and say that um, a lot of what makes the network attractive is the wide diversity of chains and um, a lot of the bigger customers that we have use us for the big chains, but they came to us for the small chains. Um, so definitely uh, small chains are, are needed. Um, the The other thing that I would say that's a bit of a nuance is like users don't give a crap about the, they don't care and they don't understand either the difference between mainnet and archival. And I understood, or I understand that this was done to make a more diverse supply side. But at the end of the day, customers want nodes with everything enabled. They, they want trace and debug archival nodes only. And so like moving in that direction is both a simplifier from a from a demand perspective, but also a major attraction um, for for many users. Any other questions about that? Don't worry, I won't come asking for Solana archival though. I, I'm I'm not deluded enough to ask for that. I've actually got a, a really great 486 DX with the Mathco processor that I'm gonna stand up as a Solana node. Are you going in for the full petabyte of data too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a series of 1.5 uh, uh, soft floppy disks that I'm gonna use for that. <laughs> Uh, Ramiro says they might understand the difference between archival and normal nodes, but they should understand the difference in price of relays. Yeah, this is something when we passed the variable RTTM proposal uh, some months back, this is what uh, exactly what that kind of thing is is to be used for is, um, you know, adjusting rewards per the complexity of uh, the, the service being served. Um, so I expect uh, that's probably the first thing that we're going to see it used towards. 100%. That was the complete intention on pushing for that, is to get to a point. It was just difficult like in the, with the way the foundation of the DAO were set up prior to the passing of PIP38, it was just going to be difficult to go and have to manually vote on tweaking those parameters every week or every month. 
So right now we have the flexibility to just set initial values, take a step back, and then you know let it ride for seven to fourteen to twenty one days or however, and then do it again, and then put it at least until Shannon is live or a version of Shannon that can have this automated. Um, just do this manually, um, and that's one of like the immediate benefits of kind of centralizing control of PNF and the DAO for the time being. Miss Kitty asks, that spreadsheet will eventually be used to let node runners choose which difficult or low traffic chains to support, kind of like what was done with the Altruist network? Uh, no, I, I would not say that. It's not It's not going to act as an Altruist network. It will be traditional tokenomics through the chain. However, there might be some uh, additional incentive to be the sole bootstrapper of them if no one else shows up. The first lever that we want to pull is the RTTM le lever to uh, see adoption with, uh, on some of these smaller chains. But at the same rate, I think it's, it, it was a bit surprising to me that no one jumped on some of these supply or, so, or smaller chains because being the sole provider on a smaller chain means you win 100% of the relays. And so that, that incentive, I thought, would be enough. But we're, uh, we're going to work on the RTTM to even spike that even more. Yeah, we always had the ratio of uh, relays to supporting nodes for lesser trafficked chains. Uh, RTTM adds another multiplier in there that should help make it worthwhile for uh, the harder chains to support. Uh, Tony, I think for your question, it's an interesting question, and um, it certainly is a way that you can do it. It's a decision on each gateway to make the pricing decisions how they want to make them. If you if you want to do compute units, if you want to do uh, bytes, if you want to do whatever for your pricing scheme, that's that's totally the gateway's decision. Um, I can say from experience, though, like one of the number one attractive features of our gateway is flat pricing and extremely transparent pricing. We don't discriminate on the method call, on the amount of data, or any of that, and that has helped be a major selling point with customers. A couple points yeah, there. I, mean, this was, I just don't want to be ignorant about this, but go ahead. Go ahead first. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's gateways, um, business tactics, in you know charging customer either flat or different pricing but at the end of the day right i mean when adjusting rttm for the sta stability of let's say solana network then more minting will be done but how can it be compensated so that the burn will be you know so much similar to the minting in a way or sure. burn should should be more in a way right meaning Gateway charge, let's say two dollar per million, and you know, node runners gets hundred dollars per million of Solana. That doesn't make any sense to me. So, uh, what I'll say is, this has kind of been thought through. I don't want to front run Mike's thoughts on here, right? He told me this morning that we can speak about what's coming, which is why I'm giving you all a heads up. But but there are ideas that he has kind of put in place to discuss this. But for the moment. Where we are with the burn is the da uh, is the following. The, where we are at the stage of this project is the is to gr begin growing demand. So it's not just coming from Grove, right? It's coming from these other ecosystems. Hence the pivot for Grove to not have to have an entire sales team to go out and try to fly out to all these conferences, meet all these customers, and get the dribble of traffic that they're willing to give us. Uh, or given the fact that a lot of these customers don't have a shit ton to give to begin with. Um, the idea is to open that up to the wider world and also expand the types of verticals that Pocket Network can support. So where Grove is sitting right now is our goal is to allow for other gateways to process this traffic, right? Similar to the gateway server kit from Nodis and so on. And then we just had a call this morning again with another uh, LLM provider, and that might actually move faster than anything else that we have going, depending on how that conversation goes and on how the next steps go there. But the idea here is to allow for decentralized demand to flourish. And 
one of the discussions that we had in PIP 38 before, after I remember, it was like basically the entire summer for me, was gateways should not be taxed right away, or at least right now at the stage of this project, um, uh, as we're growing demand. That, the, the, the gateway tax, the protocol fee, whatever you want to call it, that will be handled by PNF. So rather than, let's say in this case, Grove paying the fee to PNF and then PNF refunding the fee um, as a rebate, PNF is just going to burn tokens. While I'm not sure if Mike has been burning tokens for the last few weeks, I know I had mentioned to him and I know it's on his agenda to begin burning tokens, either retroactively or moving forward at the rate that was agreed upon a year and change ago by myself and Jack when it was just us and PNF. Uh, at the 85 cents per million. But moving forward, it is not, we're not going to be, the gateways themselves are not going to be burning tokens um, for the time being. Um, as for what is the total amount of tokens, you know, is the amount of tokens going to be minted going to be unbounded? Are there going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars minted per day? No, there is, a, there, like I said, Mike has an idea for this. It's a very interesting one. And it's something that we can do without consensus breaking changes. So I would just say, let's just hold off on that, Tony, until then. But it's a good question. I, I wrote it on the channel, but yeah, I mean, if more gateways are driving the relays and maybe at the start to stabilize the network, increase the RTTM, but when there are more relays coming, then maybe reduce RTTM, something like that. So yeah, I, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, basically that, that's part of it in there, right? Like the RTTM value that you see on the, like the multipliers you see on the right, they take into function the total number of relays that are done plus the difficulty to run that specific hardware. So if the relays go up, then you know that that times that will that will change. But again, this like, we're going to be experimenting. Like I I want everyone to understand. Like it, for years, people have thought that we have a perfect one. That thought they've assumed that everything is perfect or should be working in perfect working order, and it's created these expectations that have been insane and wild at times and have burned out a lot of people that used to work here. Um, and I want to everyone understand that we are still experimenting here. Like this is a very, we are a mature protocol. We, are, we have done a lot, a lot of things that other protocols have not done, but we are still literally experimenting here with this entire thing. This is still in my mind, all of this like a very complex beta that has been alive in the wild and we are applying whatever lessons and patches that we can as we can and it should still continue to be treated as such economics at the top of that list um yeah i mean yeah i mean this whole thing is really complex i mean yeah it's really hard to catch up but I brought up this question because, you know, when I read Twitter or the sentiment of the community or even the outsiders who wants to get into Pocket, first thing they go for is, you know, Pocket economy or tokenomics is float. So it should be fixed before I invest something in. So that's the reason why I kind of brought up this because I don't know. I mean, even if we, as in the people who really work for the protocol, not work, but, you know, the investors or whoever, who have already invested in the protocol is kind of thinking that everything is perfect. And you're saying it's not. Yeah, we kind of now know that it's not that perfect world. But outside of the pocket network, lots of um, non-pocket investors, they need some message or, you know, confidence that, okay, now pocket has this you know, tokenomics and economy and all this RTTM, all these things are fixed. So that's the reason why I kind of brought it up, not try to, you know, um, go sideways. Sure, I appreciate it. It's just not my domain right now to answer this question. This is where I think Mike and Jinx by proxy, when they're ready and uh, can fill this in. Um, but I, I, for, for the point that I'm trying to bring up today is we are going to do a thing. The thing is an experiment. Mike has a separate related thing with economics that relates to this experiment. He will publish it soon. Given that the vast majority of people on this call are usually node runners, I just wanted to bring up the node running piece. So it, it is not a shock or surprise that when things drastically change. 
But thank you, Tony, as always. That's it. That's all I had to bring up to you all as a kind of an update. Other thoughts or questions about that or any other topics y'all want to chew on? It's y'all's hour, so I'm happy to give some of the time back if nobody else has anything. I kind of have another question to Arthur. Sure. Um, you said something about the um, instability of the network, and Gandalf has caused some issues with node runners. So, I mean, investors like me i don't understand what went wrong or what's happening i mean you know we thought gandalf is gonna be the you know next big step towards one to one one pocket to one on other side chain so does this mean that gandalf is not working properly i think there's multiple opinions here right i can i have my own i know fred has his own and i, I want to preface with whatever i say now is my own opinion and by no means should it be any more valid or less valid than anyone else's i think in spirit gandalf is a good idea i think the timing of it it can it should happen at another point in time um right now because the economics are the way they are uh and again i'm assuming for the node runners you can correct me if i'm wrong here basically if you have 15 chains that you're running and you know x amount of nodes and the number of nodes stays st static but the number of chains that you can support goes down you're going to index to support the most profitable amount of nodes. And the most profitable amount of nodes, there's a, uh, uh, if you have to choose, you're going to get rid of support for the, the chains that don't generate the same amount of tokens per relays for whatever, you know, whatever those relays may be. So what ended up happening is within the first two weeks is we lost support. We weren't able to form sessions for 10, for 10 different chains. That means we didn't have at least 24 nodes, pocket nodes staked on the network. Um, at that point, because a bunch of node runners, and again, I'm not faulting them, they're doing whatever they can for their business, given the situation that we're in right now, um, to support those chains. Um, the idea is eventually for Gandalf to encourage you know, specialists to come into the network, but the network economics don't really make it, the network economics, nor the documents, nor a bunch of the other things that are in place, don't make it very easy to become a new node runner right now. Um, so there is no real incentive or learning or education or outreach to bring in those Solana specialists or the Aptos specialists or what have you to run those specialist nodes. So what we've done now is we've basically made, you know, made it harder to, to support the current breadth of chains that we want to support. I think the other issue that was brought up, and I forgot who brought it up last week, was, sure, okay, great, there are you know, now it's a little more competitive. You have to run to be more clever about how you run nodes, but not a lot of people are actually staking new nodes. If you look, the total number of nodes staked has actually been going down, not up. Um, uh, right? Like the 31, from the 31 nodes that were staked yesterday, 30 were from growth. Um, uh, so that also makes it difficult because there's no uh, extra working capital being put in to stake new nodes with existing providers to then be able to... Um, they uh, create, create more diversity for the chains that used to be supported because it's not profitable to support them. Or, um, and so that is where some of the economic proposals that Mike's going to bring in will, it, will make it more incentivized and profitable to support those chains so that we can create this, what I personally in my head consider to be like a stable point or a safety net where all the chains that we've already whitelisted onto the network or the vast majority of them that we want to continue supporting, they will have the economic incentives to be supported and then we will go out and get traffic to at least add uh, to be able to make sure those they generate enough tokens so that these node yeah. runners can run those chains. Anyway, that's me. That's my opinion. I could be very off or wrong, but that's how I've interpreted it. But we're not going to make any changes to Gandalf from the conversations that we've had. Mike's asked a bunch of the node runners about, about gateways about it. We've just uh, decided just to keep it as is. Fred, if you want to follow on with anything. 
I mean, go for it. <laughs> I want to go to one, but I think that like we need to have all the right measures in place to make sure that there's going to be true competition on the supply side to ensure that people are going to go after and be experimental while Gandalf is happening and try to win on the smaller chains. And I think, you know, some combination of Gandalf plus RTTM plus 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 is uh is the right way and is the ultimate end state but i can also understand the hesitancy to do it again it was extremely disruptive to our service it's not a good look and when you have an sla back service and you're looking to provide four nines or above um you know a service just getting basically rugged because you know no one's really looking at it is uh is not a good look so um i can understand the hesitancy i still think the answer is to go to one uh sooner rather than later and um, I just, I, I'm really looking for the supply side to be really innovative and experimental to win relays. Miss Kitty says, if we continue to win, we'll have to coordinate a hell of a lot better, though. Agreed completely. That's uh, that's something that needs to be handled. And there needs to be a, a lot more cooperation and communication, I think, for, for that to be effective. Chat's busy in the sidebar. Feel free to uh, come off mic or uh, come off mute and uh, express that aloud. Um, my opinion with the move on Gandalf is one of the missed things that we probably should have done is lowered the stake um, for a node. Like, if you're going to reduce by half, you should lower the stake by half. So we probably should have gone down to a 7,500 uh, node stake. Which is something that still could be done at any point in time, correct? Yes. What's up, Sarah? I have not checked. I don't know. I don't think so. I think I've only gotten GIs. Okay. Sure. <laughs> well, had to mute Miss Kitty.
Oh my God, I was muted the whole time. Jesus Christ, I am so sorry. See, this is what happens when I'm sick. I'm not on top of the game. <laughs> All right, so let me let me roll back here. Um, Arthur said we're teeing up combos with a bunch of foundations for when we're ready uh, and that he needs to drop. That is, that is of course, the whole goal of Gandalf, um, that, uh, you know, that ultimately that we get people who are already running high-quality chain nodes for their own chains um, to be participating themselves within Pocket Network. So I'm glad to see that we are continuing to move forward uh, towards that goal in spite of the complexities that we've found along the way. Mm. To Tony's point, any uh, last thoughts or feedbacks or questions before we wrap up for the day? I'm probably going to take some more cold meds and go back to bed. Okay. Well, if there's no other uh, questions or points, well, Breezy's typing. I'll give you a second to finish in here. If I understood Arthur correctly, one impediment to Gandalf's success was difficult in node set up by nude people, or not nude people, new people. <laughs> what if anything is being done or can be done to make this easier? Um, oh, that's from Zatar. Um, and thanks, Breezy. Uh, Zatar, there is uh, um, there are products being deployed very soon that will make uh, one-click node staking significantly easier uh, for non-technical users where they can just pick a supporting provider and uh, stake to that node. So um, I, I think that uh, in, in a very short order, the process of node staking, uh, regardless of node provider, is going to get a lot simpler. And Ben Vance typing. We can cross the river slowly or quickly. What we can't do is stop in the middle. Yeah, agreed completely. All right. Well, if that's the last of our questions and topics for the day, then we'll wrap up here. I will hopefully be much better when I see you all next week. Same time, same channel. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.